Huge thanks to my exclusive Computex sponsor, ASRock. I use an ASRock Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard in my personal rig and I absolutely love it. So make the right choice with your next build and get yourself an ASRock motherboard. Links are in the description down below. <laughs> So I just got back from Computex and I checked out so many ASRock X570s so I'm going to give you a rundown of them working from the entry level ones up to the higher end ones. So most of them feature active cooling and I asked about that and that's because the X570 motherboards support PCIe Gen 4 which creates a lot of heat and makes it necessary to have active cooling or a large heat sink so that's why they have that. It also seems from what I've been hearing that we're just going to be having X570 motherboards until sometime next year. That's when the B550 motherboards are apparently going to come out. So that's why you'll see a lot of companies releasing like a wide range of X570s right now because they're going to have to do you for quite some time. So let's jump into it then with the X570 Phantom Gaming 4. So this is the entry level ASRock X570, but it still features a 10 phase VRM, a reinforced PCI slot, twin M.2 slots, has active cooling, and a solid rear I.O. for an entry level motherboard. This will be a good one for those that are not interested in overclocking or some of the other features some of these other X570s will have. So it's good in that way because it will come in at a low price point, which will mean that most people will be able to afford it. Next up is the X570 Steel Legend. This is a more mainstream X570 with a focus on good looks and RGB for all you guys that like that. And I do really like the look of it. It's an awesome looking motherboard when you see it in person. But it's not all about looks. It still has a 14 phase VRM with decent heat sinks on it. And it should come in at a reasonable price point, right in the middle of ASRock's lineup. Although we don't have any idea on pricing right now, it still looks like it's going to be a solid motherboard. Now the X570 Extreme 4 is also aimed at the mainstream market, with a focus on being great value for money. It also features the same 14 phase VRM with decent heat sinks, twin M.2 slots, Another solid I.O. as you would expect, including Gigabit LAN, but it doesn't feature onboard Wi-Fi. Although some people don't really mind that so much. I think this will be a motherboard that a lot of you guys are interested in. It doesn't have the fancy looks or the RGB of the Steel Legend, but it still looks like it would be a really, really good sort of mainstream, mid-level, value-for-money motherboard. Next up is the X570 Phantom Gaming X. Now this is more aimed at the high end as it features Wi-Fi 6, a beefy 14 phase VRM with big heat sinks on it there, three M.2 slots, and it looks really good too. I really like the look of this one. So yeah, this is definitely more aimed at the enthusiast crowd. Uh, it's definitely gonna be more up there in price as it has more of those features. Uh, so I think this will be one for those that maybe want to spend a bit more money than what you maybe might pay for the Extreme 4 or Steel Legend and get some of those extra features there. Now the most unique one I would say, or one of the most unique motherboards I saw today, was the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX. This thing is really interesting. Uh, so the whole rear I.O. cover is made of aluminium and it doubles as a heat sink. So that's a quite a cool design there. And it has a little fan there on the uh, chipset to help cool it down, which is quite cool to see on, the, uh, on a little uh, ITX. Now it features Thunderbolt 3 and Wi-Fi 6. And if you look there, it's actually made for Intel coolers because the uh, stock AMD mounts apparently take up too much space. So there's no chance of mounting an AMD stock cooler with this one. Uh, but I don't think most people do anyway. So, you know, it should be fine. Most people building uh, mini ITX rigs and that, they will uh, always use aftermarket cooling. Now I asked if it could handle the 3900X, you know, the 12 core. And they said it would be able to handle it. Although you're not going to be able to overclock with it. So it'd be quite cool to see like a 12 core beast machine uh, with this motherboard and like a mini ITX rig. I think that would be really cool. Next up is the X570 Tai Chi. 
and I think a lot of enthusiasts will like this motherboard. So this is similar to the Phantom Gaming X, as it's a high-end motherboard, although it has different looks. I'll let you decide which one looks better. Uh, it shares the same 14-phase VRM as the Phantom Gaming X, as those big heat sinks, Wi-Fi 6. Uh, it's looks really good and I, I quite like it I, I do really like this motherboard I, I like the IO as well looks really solid there and uh, one thing I did ask them about when I was looking at this motherboard is the CPU power connectors there you can see there's an 8 pin and a 4 pin and I asked with the Ryzen 9 3900X if you can get away with just using the 8 pin and they said that you can uh, but if you're going to do any overclocking you definitely want to use that 4 pin as well so that's quite interesting there uh, for people that are going to overclock but I think this is going to be a really solid motherboard and this is probably the one that I'm paying the most attention to right now now next up is the X570 Aqua which I actually can't show you right now I'll show you that tomorrow it's a limited edition motherboard it's going to come with a crazy design and also a crazy price and uh, yeah that's all I can say for right now then we have the X570 Creator which is quite different to the other ones is this one's aimed at productivity and sort of content creation not so much gaming once again it features a 14 phase VRM with big heat sinks twin M.2 slots with heat shield supports Thunderbolt 3 with two type C Thunderbolt connectors which is nice to see Wi-Fi 6 10 gigabit LAN plus it has a much more subtle design than the other ones it's less gamery as you would expect and it's set up more for stability rather than outright performance, which is what a lot of productivity users really look for in a motherboard. Then we have the X570 Pro 4. So this is similar to the X570 Creator in that it's aimed at productivity users, although it's like a trimmed down version as it has a 10 phase VRM and less features overall. But it will come in at a lower price point. So this is going to be a good one for those that maybe don't want to pay the extra money for the X570 Creator or those that don't think they'll use the extra features you get with the X570 Creator. Uh, so it's going to be good for those sort of productivity users out there. Then we have the X570 M Pro 4. It's very similar to the Pro 4. It's just sort of like a squeezed version. <laughs> That's kind of like what it looks like. It retains most of the features, including the twin M.2 slots, which is quite cool to see. Uh, and this will just be for those looking to build a smaller rig on a uh, budget-friendly sort of price point. Uh, this will be something I think you would see with people trying to build a bit of a smaller compact rig with something like the Ryzen 7 3700X and doing some productivity with that. Now I asked if X570 is stable or they're still having issues with it. They said it's still a little bit buggy and that's mainly because of the PCIe Gen 4. They've had a few issues with that. But they think it's going to be pretty much worked out by the time these are released and you'll just get the usual you know, minor bugs for the first month or two when it comes out and they'll slowly uh, fix those. But for the most part they seem fairly confident that X570 should be really good to go. Uh, once it's released and once the Ryzen, new Ryzen 7 and uh, Ryzen 9 CPUs come out for it. Now I also saw some prototype ASRock GPU coolers with these really cool like three fan designs and some pretty fancy RGB going on. I asked what they were for. I actually kind of thought they were maybe non-reference Radeon 7s. But they're actually for the upcoming RX 5700 series Navi GPUs, 5700 series. This is quite cool. I did take a peek above them and I saw that they featured twin 8-pin power connectors. Uh, so maybe those Navis are sucking down quite a bit of power. But who knows? I'll take that with a huge grain of salt uh, because I'm not really sure yet. And these are all just prototypes and it's still a little while away yet. But yeah. So that's a roundup of the Azeroc X570 motherboards. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, they're looking really solid. Personally, I really like the look of that X570 Tai Chi, so that might be the one I trend towards. But ASRock usually releases a Tai Chi Ultimate model as well, and I think that's going to be their very, very top end, aside from maybe the Aqua, uh, the tai Chi, X570 Tai Chi Ultimate. They didn't say anything to me, but I have a feeling maybe that may, might come out sometime in the future, and that will be you know really, really something. But the X570 Tai, tai Chi still looks awesome, so yeah. I really like that. 
And I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.